Hey, Tim Vandersloos here. Some of you might be noticing a little bit of difference in my setup currently. Well, relief carving isn't the only thing I do. So my setup changes depending on what I do and my workstation fits what I'm doing. So what I want to do in this video is talk about dust collection because I'm getting all kinds of emails saying, hey, what kind of dust collection system do you use and how is it hooked up? Well, that's what this video is all about. So let's get going. All right, so before I pick up that camera and start getting the shaky hand cam look in my video, I want to explain a few things to you first. I use a four inch dust collection hose. All right, and it comes straight from my dust collector. Now I'll show you both of these things in just a moment. All right, but it's going to get shaky, so let me sit here and talk to you for a second. Right now, as you can see, I don't have my dust collecting hose hanging up here like you see in, in previous videos. Okay, right now it's mounted under the table, and I'll, I'll pick that up and show you here in a minute, okay? Because some things I do, like uh, 3D carving, all right? I'm working on a bird right now, a little chickadee. Uh, I need a dust collector in a different position. Okay, because I'm using different power tools. For in the round carving, a lot of the wasting away material and stuff like that, I'll use a flex shaft machine. Now, this is a pro flex shaft by Master Carver. All right, this is a phenomenal flex shaft machine. All right, a lot of people know about Fordham, but strangely enough, not very many people know about Master Carver. This is a one third horsepower machine that spins up to 26,000 RPMs. This has a good strong horsepower, lots of torque, will really help you waste away material and do that. And that's what I've been setting up and doing with my bird here. Now, another other, other tools that I have that uh, kind of determine where my dust collector is going to be is my micro grinder by Master Carver. All right, it's a Master Carver combo. And I'll show you all this in, in future videos, but I just want to give you an overview as to why. I position things where I position them. Now, when I'm working with uh, my flex shaft machine, all right, I want the wood wood fibers, all right, all the dust particles coming off as I'm carving, coming towards me, and inside my table right here. I pull that off; you can kind of see it right here. Okay, inside the table, I I have a dust collector, so it'll siphon everything right down into it as I'm carving towards myself. That gives me the most control, and I'll get into more detailed stuff eventually on using um, these other tools. Right now, I'm focusing mostly on power relief carving, okay? So it's a different setup. But I want to show you what's going on so you get a full view of how things work. So when I'm carving towards myself, uh, the dust goes straight down this, this chute through the dust collection system and is caught. All right, now when I'm doing relief carving work, it's hanging up above here. Because the high speed engraver only has one direction that it can spin. There's a question for you. What's the difference between having forward and reverse or just having one direction? And I'll cover that later too, so keep your eyes open. All right, so it depends on what I'm doing. So, just a second, I'm gonna pick up and we're gonna go shaky hand cam stuff here, and I'm gonna show you my setup, and then I'll, I'll reset it up for doing some relief carving work and I'll show you the differences in what is going on. All right, real quick, be right back. Flash. All right, so I gotta tell y'all, you're getting the sawdust and all, you're getting the dirty version. I'm not gonna go get my shop back out and clean everything up just to shoot this video. All right, so here we are at my carving station. If I back up and pan around a little bit, I'm sitting right in the corner. All right, this table's not very big. I, uh, I'll show you the whole table setup later, but right now let's focus on the dust collector. So as you can see right now, I've got that four inch hose coming right down and right there. Okay, so when I'm power carving, doing stuff like the birds and the, and the, and the boots and stuff like that, I, I can carve towards myself. That sawdust comes straight off right down the dust chute. Oh yeah, check it out. Pretty cool. All right, now underneath, here we go. Okay, we're getting down and dirty. That's a closet flange right there, a four inch closet flange. You can find them at Home Depot, Lowe's, all right, home improvement stores like that. I cut a hole in the wood. You can see that the wood here overhangs the table 
and I bolted this wood slab onto the table to extend the work surface and allow me to attach this to the bottom. All right, this piece of wood is bolted to the, the actual um, plastic table. All right, now as I'm carving, it just goes right down. Okay, like I said, down and dirty here, okay? There's my foot pedals, all right? This small one right here is my pneumatic foot switch, and I'll talk about that. It's for the high-speed engraver. And that larger foot pedal right there is a variable speed foot switch for my flex shaft machine. All right, and that hose just comes right over here to the workhorse of this station. Well, look at that. You get to even see my garbage can. Let me move that out of the way. All right. So here it is. This is my little, tiny, powerful dust collector. Now, most of the dust I pick up is really fine because anything larger I use a shop vac for, you know, with like the chop saw, table saw, band saw, that kind of stuff. I'll use a shop vac for it. All right. But right here at the carving station, this is a dedicated um, dust collection system. It's a little tiny thing. All right. Now, I'm going to show you where to get this. In just a second, I'll pop over to the computer and I'll show you where to get it. It's really inexpensive. It'll get you going. And this sucker is powerful. So no worries there. All right. So that's the dust collection system set up for doing relief carving or not relief carving stuff, but my other kinds of power carving. All right. There's my little birdie and my boots. All right. Doing that kind of work. It works best to have a dust collection system set up in front of me so the dust will go down that way. All right, so give me just a second. I'll set things up the other way, and I'll show you just why I do it the way I do it for power relief carving. Okay, with a flash of movie magic, I've reset my carving station up for doing relief power carving. Well, good for you. Uh, it only took about five minutes for me, and I wasn't in any hurry to do it anyway. All right, now let me show you this. All right, mason line and zip ties. Okay, here we go. Nice pan up real quick. Let me turn off the light. Move it out of the way a little bit for you. All right, that changes things a little bit. Now, I've taken the same four-inch hose, and I've zip tied it to a, a dowel right here, okay? Now, this dowel is strictly just to make this rigid so it doesn't flop, flip-flop and move around. And I use zip ties. Now, I, I use multiple, and normally I would cut these off, okay? I would cut these off really good, but because I just wanted to show you, I left them long, all right? But normally, when I, once I get done setting up, I will clip them off and clean up the workstation a little bit. Now, it just runs to a shelf I've got up here. I just mounted a shelf. It's got the lights and everything else, zip ties up above, and there's that mason line, okay? Now, when, when I set things up, this is just my personal workflow. All right, I'm moving things around a lot. So I'm going for function more than form, okay? So I got twine dangling all over the place and zip ties sticking out, you know, but it really doesn't matter to me, okay? Now I've got my turntable here. There's a nice little picture of something I've been doing. I did, all right, let me get that out of the way. I'll show you my turntable later on, all right? But it has full clearance right here. I can spin the turntable. And it will just get sucked. Everything gets sucked right up that way. Now the rotation, let me go back to this real quick. The rotation of the high-speed handpiece, for me, kicks all that dust straight that way. Okay, because I'm left-handed. But the dust particles are so fine, it really doesn't matter. You'll see lots of carvers have those box fan type dust collectors sitting on their table, and they'll use those. Well, I don't have one of those. I have one of these hoses and a nice big dust collector. So that's what I use. You know, whatever you got, go ahead and use. All right, and then it just comes, trails up, more zip ties right here, and twine, okay, and down to my dust collector. Just like that, plain and simple. Not much to it. Now let's jump over to the computer, and I'll show you where I got this dust collector and just how much it costs and how strong it is. It's a great little workhorse of a motor, so let's do that next. Okay, so I've jumped over here onto the internet just to show you where I got the dust collector I'm using for my power carving station. And, hey, why go and buy the biggest, most expensive thing for a, a, a simple use? So I went looking, and here on Harbor Freight is where I got 
my dust collector. All right, it's this one right here, 12 gallon mini dust collector, and it's got a really good price. So I don't mind that one bit. I come down here and you can look in the description right here, and the airflow is 914 cubic feet a minute. Now, if you saw the actual size of my workshop, um, that entire air gets circulated in my workshop about every two minutes. So, as you can tell, um, my workshop's not very big. All right. So, if I've got a lot of dust just uh, in the air, just floating around in the air, I'll kick this on and let it circulate the air in my entire workshop for a few minutes, and it will suck it out, all the dust particles, and clean it up in in the uh, in the air itself. So this is a simple, inexpensive way to set up a carving station if you don't want to go out and and spend a lot of money. Now, you look at the reviews right here. It's only got two and a half out of five. Hey, I don't know. I've had this same dust collector for five years. I spent just about the same amount of money. Uh, it doesn't get constant use day in and day out and day in and day out. Um, you know, cause there's days and, and, and times that I don't carve just like anything. All right. So, uh, over that five years it's done the job. It's still kicking. It does a fantastic job. It is noisy. If you don't want a noisy, uh, dust collector, put it out in a different place, you know, and run your hose in. So it's in a different room. So it's not noisy and come up with a way to hook it up and, and kick it on when you need to. But this is my solution. It works good. Um, the next thing I, I would do because I do set up my carving station in multiple ways is I might buy this dust collector accessory kit right here which gives me a Y and dust gates uh, airflow gate so that I can just have a line going to both locations and just open the gate that I want to at the same at the time so I don't have to relocate anything but as it goes you know that's just how I use it uh, some other ideas um, I, I went looking, and here is a tabletop dust collector. You might hook one of these up to a hose and just set it behind your work surface. A lot of people set these up behind their chop saws, uh, their sliding miter saws or whatever, in order to catch that uh, sawdust as it kicks out. You could hook a hose to this, set it behind your dust collection system, system as well. And, uh, you know, that way when you blow off your work, it'll go right down that chute. Uh, another option, I just wanted to show you a couple different options. Both of these are on woodcraft.com. But uh, this is typically the kind of dust, dust collector that I see set up on a bench top or a tabletop. That It's a nice little thing here. It's got a filter. The, the box fan just sits there and it, and it runs on your tabletop just like that uh, to filter the air right there at your workstation. Um, if you look right here, it's only 500 cubic feet a minute, okay? The dust collector I've got is basically twice as powerful as this unit, and I can use it in other situations. Now, I don't use a cyclone or a large uh, system to, to filter the fine dust particles from the larger particles because with my power carving, it's all small particles unless I happen to drop something down uh, when I'm carving in front of me. But uh, on that rare occasion, I just flip the switch really quick, and I'm, I'm most of the time I'm safe. But here are some options for you. I just wanted to, wanted to show you exactly where I purchased it, show you how much it costs. I like it. I use it. Okay. But I, I will say this. You're going to get what you pay for. And if I had the money, I would go spend three, four hundred dollars $500, $500, give me a really large industrial type dust collector that I could run throughout my entire shop and eventually I'll do that but just to have something dedicated to my power carving station right there set up where I can just flip it on and off and use it and I know that the majority of the dust particles are going to get picked up large and small this really fits the bill all right that's it for this video have a great day if you like it please uh, share the video give me a thumbs up subscribe to my YouTube channel Come over to Google+, Plus. find me there, Tim Vanisloos. I'm there over on Facebook. You can catch up to me, follow what I'm doing. And as always, for more information, come on over to carvingonwood.com. Check out the blog post, just the blog feed at the top. 
check out the the tabs there on the website, you know, for specific information, what you might be looking for. I'm always adding more every week. But if you enjoy it, come on over, visit. I'd love to answer any questions you may have and uh, chat with you. All right. Have a great day.